I recently built a declarative RxJS and Signals based state management utility called Signal Slice, but I didn't realize it would actually end up being a pretty powerful way to manage reactive forms in Angular. I'll link to my other video in the description that describes Signal Slice in more detail, but the general idea is that it is a state management utility that allows hooking up observable sources to a state signal. Data emitted on the observables gets set into the signal. A key part of the philosophy of Signal Slice is to allow and in some ways enforce more declarative code. There isn't a way to patch state imperatively with Signal Slice. Everything must either be derived from its source, or if a state does need to change as the result of some kind of imperative action, it needs to be declared up front with an action source, which is an imperatively triggered action that will return an observable source that updates the state signal. Dealing with forms wasn't at the top of my mind when building Signal Slice, but after experimenting with it recently, it's actually quite nice to use. It can deal with a lot of the typical problems people have when trying to be reactive or declarative with reactive forms in Angular. Things like asynchronously loading data and setting control values, changing one control as the result of some other control being interacted with, and posting data on form submission without having to deal with a manual subscribe. In using Signal Slice to power reactive forms, there is one key idea that makes it work really nicely. We can create a signal slice with an initial state that matches all of the values in our form, along with any additional state we want to track, like this status state for example. Then we can use the value changes from the form as a source so that all the values from the form are set into our state signal whenever they change. If I add this effect to log out the signal value, you can see that whenever I change the values in the form, they are reflected in the state signal. This means we can easily access any of our state values in the template, we can compute whatever derived values we want, and we can also easily react to certain form values changing through signal effects. You can see that we can even do more awkward things quite nicely, like changing a control's validators based on another control changing. We can also deal with loading the initial values for the form asynchronously quite easily. In this scenario, we have the form disabled initially whilst the data loads. And once the form data loaded source emits, we patch the form with the loaded values and we change the status to loaded. Since we have this enable after load effect, it will automatically enable the form when the status changes to loaded. Then we have the scenario of dealing with posting data to a server when the form is submitted. For that, we have an action source that is triggered by calling form state .submit. When this happens, we switch to the post request we use start with to change the status to submitting while the request is in progress. If the request is successful, we set the status to success. And if there is an error, we set the status to error. That status state is just in our state signal now, so we can react to it automatically however we like. We could display some message in the template, navigate to some other page, or whatever else we like. And just a quick note, you might have noticed in the effects I always have emit event set to false. This is because otherwise it will cause the value changes source to emit even if the value hasn't changed and we are using value changes to set data into a signal. Setting a signal as a result of an operation from an effect is not allowed by default so we prevent that from happening here by setting emit event to false. This way our effects aren't causing writes to signals. I'm still experimenting with this and I think there are some things that can make this approach easier. For example, making reflecting the form values in the state signal easier, perhaps by using a helper function like this. But even as it is, I like this a lot more than just working with reactive forms directly, and especially if I'm already using signal slice to manage state anyway. For comparison, here is what the equivalent implementation would look like without signal slice, using a more standard imperative approach. There are general differences here, but I think the important difference is that the signal slice approach is more declarative. At least it is important if you place importance on declarative code. With signal slice, the entire behavior of the form is defined within the declaration of this form state. But the signal slice approach here is still somewhat imperative. We could say that the form in its entirety is declarative, but there are still imperative aspects within it. For example, how do we know when the explanation field should be required? There is no declaration of that. We have imperative effects modifying the validators in the form. So to know when the explanation field is required, we need to search through the effects to see when validators are being added or removed. It is better that the imperative code is at least restricted to the scope of the form declaration. And at this scale, it doesn't matter all that much. But for highly complex forms, this lack of declarativeness could become more troublesome. So I don't think this will end up being the ultimate way to work with forms in Angular. I think we are going to see a lot of innovation in this space very soon, 
And ultimately, I think a more template-based approach with signals will end up being the most scalable and declarative approach. But for an experience somewhat close to the existing reactive forms model with a bit more of a declarative signals twist, I think the signal slice approach is really nice to use. Let me know if you have any thoughts in the comments, and if you'd like to see more videos like this, please consider a like or subscribe before you go.